In this video, we're going to look at the mean and the variance of the logistic distribution. And here's the general form of it, where S is a positive parameter for the shape, and mu is a real number for uh, location. And so the expected value is mu, and the variance is uh, S squared pi squared over 3. So we're going to drive those. Um, also give a shout out to my buddy Chris, um, who I saw today. So let's look at the background here. Number one, this is the basal um, uh, sequence, 1 over 1 squared, 1 over 2 squared, etc. That's been shown to be pi squared over 6, and we're just going to assume you, you know that. Uh, and then two, the 1 over the positive integer squared, that sequence, as you can, you know, you can factor out a 2 squared, then you get the basal sequence. Um, and, which is uh, pi squared over 4 so we'll need this assumption and the third is this you know if we're looking at a function and it goes from 0 to 1 or t it technically can go a but in the problem we're using it's 1 so minus f of x minus 1 is equal to just f of x from 0 to 1 and there's a quick little derivation. Now, if it's 1 minus x, then you don't need the negative out front. But that's a quick derivation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to transform our variable. x is the original logistic distribution. We're going to subtract the mean, divide by s, which is a shape parameter. Um, looks like we're standardizing, but technically we're not. Um, then you can back solve for X, find the Jacobian as S, and then the distribution of Y is, is this. And so I've heard that this can be called the, the standard logistic regression, where um, mu is 0 and S is 1, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So here, we'll just jump right in. So the mean is it's uh, you integrate over the domain you stick in a y and times this pdf and you get this now let's do some substitutions here we're going to let w be one plus e to the minus y to the negative one so this is like one over this then the derivative becomes this and then when you back solve for y you get this and then you use this to plug in so this piece here is the whole differential. So that's dw, and then the y becomes this. Um, property of the log, you can break it up into the difference. And then this piece right here is, is uh, background number 3, which equals this, and then that minus that is 0. So the mean of y is 0. Remember, our goal is mean of x. So now the, the variance of y is the expected value of y squared minus the mean squared, but the mean is 0, so it's just this. <clears throat> so you put in y squared times this. Oh, before I go too farther, another way you could do this is you could know that this is an odd function. And because your limits are symmetric, you know that has to be 0. So you could technically do it in one step right here. But if you didn't realize it was an odd function, then you have to go through this. So here, this we need to find this, this uh, integral. So this expected value of y squared. And this turns out being, to be an even function. So you can go from this step to the step you can't see down here. But if you don't see it, then you can break it up into two integrals. And then you make a substitution of, say, W equals minus Y, and then sub you substitute in, and then it looks exactly like this. So you can go this, you know, just two times this interval, and then that's what we're doing there. Um, <clears throat> now, this step, notice the 2, the integral, and the Y squared are the same. So this piece here, if you... Long, take long division, so you m multiply this out, 1 plus 2e to the minus y uh, 
plus e to the two minus two y and then divide it into this and you just keep going you end up getting this infinite series right here okay and i'm gonna skip that step because i'm assuming you can do polynomial long division and and that's what this is now we're going to switch the the integration and the summation here and take out everything that doesn't have a y we're going to use uh uh uh, different uh, inter, uh, by parts integration by parts and then we're going to let u be the um, y squared and the dv be this piece here you solve it down plug it in and you get this so this is uv um, duv um, this here now this when you plug in infinity this piece goes so fast to zero that even though this piece goes to infinity, this goes to zero so much faster that it goes to zero. <clears throat> and then when you plug in zero, it goes to zero. So this drops out. We're left with this. This two can be brought out, so that makes out a four, and the ends will cancel, and we're left with this. Well, now this piece, let's do integration by parts again. <clears throat> so you let u be y, and, and this piece here be dv. You, you solve it and you plug it in <coughs> and then here again the same thing when you put in it at infinity this goes this piece goes to zero so much faster than that goes to infinity that the whole thing ends up being zero and then when you plug in zero into here that wipes out so we're left with this now this piece here can be brought out and we'll just have a one over n And then when we integrate this, we get this piece, plug in infinity at zero, then minus plug in zero, you get <clears throat> one over n, that goes to here and becomes one over n squared. So we have an alternating series of one over n squared times four. <clears throat> now this is where background one and two come into play. Um, this is that infinite series if you plug in the end. So you see it alternates. Now if this were a plus, these were all pluses, that would be the, the uh, Riemann sum or the Basel problem and it would be pi squared over six. But it's not. But if we add the, the negatives, you know, add a, po a positive of that twice, so we add them in once and then they go away, but so we add them in again, and then this becomes the, the, the Riemann sum or the Basel problem. And uh, so that's what we do here. This is adding this piece twice. So this is background number two. <clears throat> but if we add it, we have to subtract it. So, we're, so overall, we're adding zero to this equation. But this piece right here is pi squared over six. Oop. This piece here <clears throat> is pi squared over 6. We have minus pi squared over 12. That becomes uh, pi squared over 12. We get pi squared over 3. Now remember, this is the variance of y. And we wanted to find the variance of x. So <clears throat> if we look at the expected value of x, pl plug in our transform variable, Expectation goes in, so we get mu and then S times expected value of Y, but that was zero, so we're left with mu. And here, the variance of X, we plug in this, the constant goes away and the S comes out as a squared. And the variance of Y was pi squared over three, so it's S squared, pi squared over three. And that's what we set out to, to prove. So that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.